All right. Welcome everyone to the um, our Saturday social most wonderful time of the year, or is it, right? I, I thought that was the appropriate song to play. Um, welcome to all of you. I see lots of fun holiday songs. I saw um, a lot of folks saying the hippopotamus song, I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. Love that. That was my aunt's favorite song. And I actually have a, like a hippo that I can like that you put on the floor and it kind of spins around and plays the song. It's a, the, it's a great amusement to the cats. Um, so welcome, welcome everyone. Um, so with me today is Bailey. She's going to be our stage manager. So she'll be monitoring the chat. There she is kind of waving and saying hi. She'll be monitoring the chat to make sure if anybody has any questions or to let me know if you have a question or need me to go back to another slide. Um, she will be there. My name is Maya, and I am coming to you from Denver, Colorado, where it is very nice and um, warm-ish. It's probably in the 40s, but I hear we're supposed to get some cold and snow later on um, this week. So we'll see how that goes, right? All right. So um, is this anybody's first social? I don't know if anyone is a first timer here. But all of our socials, when you sign up and join our social, you are entered into the self-care gift raffle, where once a month they draw um, a name and that person gets a fun self-care gift basket. So let us dive right in because I have a lot of things to talk about with you today. Um, as you know, this month's theme in our Silk and Sonder journal is believe. And I believe that we can make this the most wonderful time of the year, but it takes a little bit of work sometimes um, and a little bit of um, our own mindset shifting to kind of make that happen. So here's what we're going to do today. Uh, we're going to do a little welcome activity, which is about holiday values, really thinking about your values, um, what that means, what the holidays mean to you, what you would like to have happening. Then we're going to do some of the exclusive activities, which are around that idea of most wonderful time of the year, right? So thinking about our to-do list, thinking about our self-care, those kinds of things. And then we'll wrap it up with uh, a one thing that you can think of for the um, rest of the month to kind of help you focus. And then I'll also give you some information that you can do an early sign up. You are getting the um, early sign up link for our 14 day email series that is coming out about believe. So I'll make sure that you have that info as well. And then of course, I will show you the playlist um, of the songs that I picked for today. So let's jump right in. Um, hopefully everyone has either your journal with you or some scratch paper, post-it notes, something to write with, right? Because that's really our key here at Silk and Sonder is this idea of putting pen to paper really helps get us out of our mind and more into, um, into areas that we can actually work on and feel better and feel more um, more comfortable and not quite chaotic, right? As this time of the year is. So I do want to mention that a lot of times I'll I'll talk about Christmas or we'll talk about Christmas, I'll talk about Christmas movies or those kinds of things. But I want to recognize that there are a lot of holidays celebrated around this time and uh, really want to recognize the diversity that we have, folks with lots of different things going on, um, lots of different holidays, things to think of. And if you haven't had a chance yet, I highly recommend listening to Meha's um, she had a melting pot daily ritual not too long ago. You can access that at any time in the app. And it's really kind of a fun one that helps you kind of think of uh, Hanukkah, Christmas, and Kwanzaa and some of the different aspects around each of those holidays and those values that each of those holidays brings to folks, right? So values really underpin all those areas in our lives, right? And sometimes... Um, you will find that we get so caught up in what we're doing and we get so caught up in our to-do list that we forget why we're doing them. We forget what values those are feeding into, or sometimes we are doing things that are not actually aligned with our values. And that can give us a lot of stress, right? A lot of body stress, a lot of mind stress, because we're doing these things and they don't actually align with our values. And those values really give us that sense of meaning and purpose as we go through life. So those values, again, provide that sense of meaning and belonging. It's that continuity of the holidays, right? 
So values are very unique to every person, unique to you and your family. And even though values are different for everyone, there definitely are some common values that we see. Um, you can see when you talk to different people and you really start to think about values, things like family, generosity, giving, faith, spirituality, remembrance, home, connection, food, tradition, legacy, comfort, friendship, and service or volunteerism. Those are just an example of some different values to kind of think about. And you may have some of your own that you're thinking of um, that really resonate with you. So what I want everybody to do is to either turn to a blank, blank notes page, or you can find some scratch paper, or you can get some post-it notes, even those kinds of things. And I want you to start thinking about the values that are an important part of your holidays. What are those values that really make things resonate for you? And then I want you to get a little creative. And you don't think that this has to be exhaustive. This is something that you can think of throughout the social um, and also throughout the rest of this month, but start thinking of ways big and small that you can connect with those values, things that you're going to do for the holiday, right? So what are maybe some things um, that are going to be on your to-do list that we'll do here in just a little bit um, that might connect with those pieces, all right? And so here's, I had just started kind of sketching some things out last night, um, just kind of thinking of holiday values. And so I gave, the first one I said was giving. I love giving people gifts, um, you know, that token of my affection, you know, thinking of them. And so ways that I can make that very meaningful and things that I do that can make that very meaningful and connect with that value of giving is making the gifts. I love knitting. And so there's usually knitted gifts for folks. Um, or sometimes I'll bake cookies or, you know, bake different things or even making um, ornaments, different Christmas ornaments um, for their tree, those kinds of things. So just making gifts instead of buying things. But sometimes I do like to buy things, but then I try to shop locally because that makes things very meaningful for me because I feel like I'm supporting our local businesses. Um, and feeling like I'm giving them my business. And the third thing I put on here is finding local charities. So finding places that uh, are local that I like to support. We got both of our cats from um, a shelter here in town. So I like to give them um, around this time of year, I give them um, blankets and um, different kinds of things for the pets. So it also doesn't always have to be about um, giving money to a charity. It could be about giving some things that I have. Oftentimes I'll go through my linen closet at this time and find some old towels and things that I'm able to give to animal shelters. And they love, love, love getting those. So the second, and then I started kind of putting family and started kind of thinking about, okay, what are things that I can do around family? And then, um, the third thing that I didn't, that I was thinking of this morning that I didn't get a picture of was kind of thinking about food as a tradition. So different kinds of foods that I like to have during this time of year that are, are um, special and evoke those memories. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a little bit of time. I'll go back to this so you can kind of see this little list. And I want you to start mm -hmm. thinking of the values um, that you have for the holidays, <clears throat> excuse me, and then start listing those ways. And you do not have to set it up like my page at all. This was just something that I kind of thought kind of made sense, but again, kind of do, um, do what makes sense for you. And please share in the chat, uh, what kinds of things, um, what kinds of values you're, you're thinking of, what kinds of things, um, are important for you during the holidays and then activities or, um, different ways that you can make those meaningful for you. So I'll play a little music, see what folks kind of pop into the chat, and then we'll check back in.
great. So some good ideas. And, and this might be something that maybe is taking you a little while to kind of get your brain wrapped around. I know sometimes when people say things like, what are your values? And I'm like, uh, so sometimes it takes a little, um, jogging of the memory or kind of poking around in your head, which we'll be doing when we get into these to-do lists. So don't feel like if you were kind of stuck with some of these that you don't have any, right? You clearly do, but maybe you just haven't had a chance to articulate those yet. Um, so I love some folks were talking about um, tradition of food, um, going to the movies. I know for a long time, we kind of had a tradition. We would always go to the movies as a family on Christmas day um, when I was younger. So that was always kind of fun. We'd see some, you know, whatever the hot Christmas movie was. Um, other folks talking about this idea of generosity, but generosity doesn't necessarily just mean money. It can mean spending time. It can mean, um, it can mean, um, you know, different kinds of ways to show that you care for someone and not just buying them a gift, right. Or giving money to a local charity. Maybe it means volunteering. Maybe it means, um, doing some things, for yourself. Maybe it means, um, you know, finding another group um, that you can maybe do like gift exchange or, you know, something like that, or again, kind of connecting with people. I think it's tough around the holidays sometimes because the weather is kind of cold and we don't have a lot of sunlight during the day, you know, our day, daylight time is shorter. And so I think a lot of times it does tend to get folks inside and maybe not able to um, spend as much time with other people or connect. So maybe one of your values is that connecting, right? And that connection. So think about maybe ways that you can connect with other folks. Love connecting with everyone here in um, the Sondra fam on the app is always great too. When people kind of can post things maybe that they're, um, they want to celebrate or things that they are struggling with. And then we can all kind of chime in and see that. So Bailey's saying some of her values this time of year are togetherness, intentionality, tradition, and remembrance. And I love that intentionality too, right? Because I think sometimes we have a tendency to rush through life maybe without, um, without kind of holding those intentions close. All right, so you've got to start on this idea of values and the things that you can do that help feed into these values that are aligned with those values. So now let's pop over to this idea of calming the chaos. And again, um, with my my favorite Christmas movie um, where she says, I don't know what to say except it's Christmas and we're all in misery. Right. I just, it's one of those things where it's like, it's funny, yet it's also kind of a, a sad statement because I feel like sometimes we, around the holidays, we just really feel like we have to do a million things and we have to do all these things. And um, it's actually making us miserable and it's not actually making us happy. So I want, we're going to spend a little bit of time kind of thinking about what that looks like um, for you this season. So we're going to tackle that to do list and talk about taking care of yourself. So what I really want to do is spend this time thinking about prioritization and reprioritization, right? Those are really the keys while you keep those values at the top of mind. So the first thing we're going to do is just a brain dump of our to-do list, right? All the things that we think we have to do, we think we should do, we think we need to do, we want to do, um, we wish we could do, right? Like all of those kinds of things. We're just going to dump those out onto a blank notes page or scratch paper or a post-it note, right? Anything that you can think of, um, any place that you want to kind of write these things out. Don't worry about editing or censoring yourself or thinking about whether you should do the thing or you shouldn't do the thing. Um, just kind of write what comes to mind, right? And so this is just kind of an example. So what we're going to do is as you put put some of your to-dos, right, the, as you're doing this brain dump into the chat, and Bailey and I will kind of um, make some notations on the slide as well. But have you ever noticed sometimes you look at these lists, like here's when Christmas to-dos, put up the tree, bake the cookies, put up the lights, send out the cards, make a gingerbread house, shop and wrap presents, have a Christmas movie night, listen or sing carols, go sledding or ice skating, read Christmas stories, right? Like all these different things. So pop in some things in the chat. Again, I'm going to play some music and you're going to just be kind of dumping, just dumping everything that you think you need to do. Maybe you want to look at your calendar. Or maybe you want to um, look at another section in your journal of the to-do list, just kind of writing down everything. And then we'll check back in and then we'll start to talk about some ways that we're going to prioritize those things as we think about moving forward this season.
All right. So look at all the things we've got up there so far. And I love everyone popping things into the chat. And I did notice at least one person said something about making time for themselves to do their yoga and to do their daily rituals. But notice how many of these other things aren't necessarily, um, yeah, and and Karen's saying, wow, my list is long, right? And that's that's the idea, right? So don't get overwhelmed yet. The idea was just to kind of dump everything out. It's kind of like, you know, you've got the box of puzzle pieces and we dump the puzzle pieces out and there's all these little puzzle pieces, but we're going to talk about ways that we can think about these things, right? All the cleaning, reading the Advent book, menu planning, church meetings, making cookies, um, and, then, and then it's New Year's. Right. Um, so like all those different kinds of things that we have and that we want to do, um, that we want to do, we think we should do, we think we need to do. Right. So we've got this like this puzzle piece, all these puzzle pieces, right? And so now we've dumped them out. So now we're going to kind of sort through them a little bit. And I'm going to clear off Bailey's lovely, oh, she cleared them off for me. Thank you, Bailey. Um, all her lovely notations. And now we're going to talk about how we can sort these puzzle pieces, right? We've got this big giant pile of puzzle pieces. So one of the ways you've probably heard us talk about in our weekly setups and our monthly setups is this idea of the Eisenhower matrix. And it really helps us make decisions um, between, you know, for tasks, right? Like how is, you know, kind of where is this task? Because a lot of times, have you ever noticed, we really think we have to do every single thing that we think we need to do, all these things that pop into our head. So this matrix is really helpful because it helps us prioritize on what to focus first and maybe some other things we can do. So that first, if you just kind of draw the little box um, and then you have things that are important and urgent, right? There are things that need to be done. There's a time, maybe there's some sort of a time frame around it. Like if you have to get stuff to the post office to mail or you need to order something online for, for folks who need to do that by a certain date. So you're going to do there are things with clear deadlines, consequences for not getting hitting those deadlines, right? Like the presents won't get there, those kinds of things. So that's one box that we can put some puzzle pieces in. So some of those to do's. The next one is it's important, but it's not necessarily urgent, right? Um, maybe it's um, like a lot of times we think we need to do something this month, but maybe some of the cleaning, maybe some of the cleaning could be put off until later, right? It doesn't have to be done right now. Maybe they don't have a deadline per se. Um, so we have to kind of decide how are we going to, um, what are we going to do with these kinds of things? Then down in the bottom box, we have things that are not important, maybe um, things, and but we can delegate. Are there some things in that puzzle pile, those pieces that you could have someone else do? If you ever, like if you do a puzzle, do you ever go, okay, you're going to do the border pieces and you sort out all the border pieces and give those to one person because they love to do that part, right? So are there some things that someone can help you with? A spouse, a friend, significant other. Remember, if we don't ask for help, um, we're just kind of taking everything on ourselves. So see if, you know, people always say, is there something I can do to help? Yes, say yes, and this is what you can do, right? Um, are there things that are not important and they're not urgent? Again, are there some things that you think you need to do that could maybe again kind of go into maybe a different pile that you don't really need to do right now? So this is one way, and I'm going to cycle through these different things as we start to um, sort through our to-do list. So this is one way. It's called the Eisenhower Matrix. Another thing we can do, and there's been a great series in the New York Times um, this this month that's 31 days of the holidays right and so they have all these different ideas of different things you can do um and there was one that was about kind of dealing with the the chaos of the holidays and the the big focus was around either saying no or reframing or a little bit of changing up what you actually are going to do in that area. So here's some examples, right? Sending holiday cards. I saw some folks say, oh I need to get the cards out. We need to do the cards. We don't have to send holiday cards. So ask yourself, where does that fit? If you have holiday cards on there, where does that fit in your values, right? Is that under like connection? Where is that? And does it actually have to go to everyone on a giant list, right? Maybe you have a smaller subset of folks that you can send things to, or maybe you wanna do a new year's card and you're gonna hold off until January to send some folks a card. Um, and you know what? It doesn't have to have your whole, like this is everything we did this year, right? I'm always so impressed impressed yet also slightly horrified at the people who have the giant list of here's all the things our family did this year. I'm thinking like, oh, I'm just exhausted reading it, right? So maybe what you want to do is, um, you know, you can just take a nice store-bought card and write in there, love, 
you know, best wishes for the new year, for the holidays and the new year, and just sign your name, right? You could also just sign your name and send it off if you really want to send things off. Uh, I saw a lot of folks were talking about baking. And yes, baking with um, someone is always super fun. So if you've promised to do that, that sounds great. Um, but maybe you, if it's just you, you need to bake stuff to, to give to someone, um, order from a local bakery, right? Order from your local grocery store, um, different kinds of things. There's, there's lots of different, um, online things where you can send. I always send, um, I found a fun Eastern pretzel, something about Eastern, Eastern standard pretzel company, but they always have all sorts of fun things. And this year they had, um, waffles like frozen waffles, and then all sorts of fancy things you can put with them. And I sent those to people and you can just hop online, plug in their address, pay for it, and away it goes to their house, right? Um, yeah, and Gold Belly does have some amazing stuff to order as well. Oh, and some people have delegated the Christmas card to the AI, right? So we're doing some electronic Christmas cards, love it. Um, attending parties. Do you have to go to every Christmas party? Um, some people love Christmas parties. Some people stress out about Christmas parties. Maybe select the ones you really wanna go to and say no to the others right? And if you do go, set an exit time, right? Set a time to leave, have that exit strategy. How are you going to get out? Oh, our babysitter is only available until such and such a time. So we've hard stopped, got to go, right? Have, have that set up already. If you're staying with family, right? That can be super stressful. Again, I think of the Christmas vacation where everybody had kind of piled into the house, right? Maybe you get a hotel, um, or maybe you stay with a neutral friend that is somewhere in the area, or maybe you just schedule a shorter visit. You're not there for quite as long. Uh, buying expensive gifts, right? Sometimes we think we have to buy those really expensive things. I would recommend thinking about experiences, giving experiences. So maybe going to the zoo or the museum or going on a hike, ice skating, game night, going to the movies, which is not actually that cheap anymore, but um, sometimes you can find some good deals on movies. And then saying no, maybe to that FOMO, right? I am guilty of this one, that fear of missing out, right? I'm I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this for my holidays. Um, so you could do things like avoid social media, or you could set a timer on your social media so you're not actually on there. Oh, Brenda has a good one. Embrace JOMO, joy of missing out. I love that. Excellent reframing, Brenda. Um, so yes, yeah, so, and, and keep a gratitude log, right? Because I think sometimes... We have a tendency to fall into that negative pattern of like, oh, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. What are you doing? Right. And what are you able to do now because you're not doing some of these other things? It's also really important to remember that no is a complete sentence. If someone asks you something, you can just say no. Um, you can also say things like no, not right now, or I can't do this, but I can do that. Right. Kind of thinking of different ways that you can kind of frame that. So think about some of those tasks that you have on your to-do. Can you reframe it? Can you shrink it down to something that's more manageable this year? It doesn't mean it always has to be like that every year. Maybe this year is fewer Christmas cards. Next year is more Christmas cards. Or the other thing that you can do is you can take and, and create a need, want, and hope to-do list. So you start your to-do list, you divide it into the three columns and you have one column is things that, um, one for your needs, needs to do these things, right? And then the next one is your wants, things that you want to do. And then the third one is hopes, right? Because you can get a better understanding a little bit of um, how to best support yourself, right? So that's another option. Oops, I'm gonna wanna go there. So that's another option for things that you can do. All right, so you've got that big to-do list right? You've got all those puzzle pieces that you've dumped out. So what I want you to do now is I want you to think of a way. First of all, I would look at each one of those tasks and say, which value does this actually align to, right? You kind of created those values. And this might be a, a spark for, oh, this is actually a value that I didn't write down, but I actually do need to because there's these things on here, right? That I, that I really do want to do that. I really, I feel good doing. I feel happy doing. And I know there's some things, I have a friend who always does um, a Thanksgiving, she does a Friendsgiving, so it's the Friday after Thanksgiving, and she makes these very elaborate um, meals for probably about 25 people that come over, and it's just all this stuff, and it was funny, we were talking about, she says, you know, it's funny, every year while I'm in the throes of doing it, I hate it, I think, why am I doing this, I'm never doing this again, this is the last year, I can't, ugh, this is just too much, I'm so stressed out. And then when the party actually starts and everyone comes and we all are, you know, enjoying ourselves so much, she loves it. 
And then she forgets about all the hassle of it until the next year. I kind of think it's maybe that way when you have kids. I don't actually have any human children myself, but my mom has five of us. And I think she must have kind of been with the whole, like, I'm never, when she was in the throes of childbirth, I'm never doing this again. And then clearly she forgot because she had four more after me, right? So again, so maybe there's some things that you're looking at and you're like, oh my gosh, this is so stressful. This takes so much time. Think about, does it feed a value that then makes it worth it, right? So that's another way to kind of frame this. So you've got your Eisenhower matrix, you've got your saying no or reframing, and then you've got your need, want, and hope list. So spend some time kind of sorting things out. Again, maybe you're not even done putting all your um, to-do puzzle pieces down. So keep doing that. Maybe you want to revisit that values page now that you've got things written down and you can kind of look and see kind of like, okay, what's going on with this? Um, let us know some ideas or things that you're thinking about in the chat, but just spend some time and work on that. And then I will pop back in and I'll cycle through these um, pages so that you can see um, the different ideas as well. All right.
All right. So I love seeing everyone's ideas and sometimes realizations that, gosh, you know, I was, um, when I actually put things down under my needs and my wants, I realized that there were a lot more wants than there were needs. And another, um, Another way that I had put in the chat that's good sometimes to divide things up in as um, essential, these things are essential and these things are delightful, right? So we can we can wait on the delightful things, a lot of essential things that really need to be done, but then we can pick some of those delightfuls um, and put in. And I love the idea with the, um, with the JOMO, the joy of missing out. I think we're going to have to throw that in as an activity um, for one of our, our socials um, either this month or maybe even next month. Maybe that's a good way to look at the new year kind of going through. And Angela, I'm so glad you can kind of see that organization. And it does seem more manageable, right? When we kind of divide things up into these columns, just like that dumping the puzzle out. And when you actually kind of divide things up, it seems like it's much more doable, right? So it's a great, great way to do any time of year, right? It doesn't just have to be around the holidays, right? It's just, it's so helpful because I think sometimes, and also writing it down. A lot of times I just have it buzzing around in my head, all these things. The worst is when I'm in the bathroom, like I'm in the shower or I'm, you know, doing my face care routine or something. And I always think of all these things, these little things that are like mucking around in my mind. So one of the things that I've done is I have kind of those um, dry erase markers and I can write things really quickly on the mirror, um, so that I don't forget them. And then they get out of my head and they, they don't feel like they're taking up that emotional space in my brain, right? So hopefully this was helpful um, as you kind of got through there. So, all right, so we've got, we have our values, we've got our to-do list and we've kind of organized that in a way that makes sense to us as we're gonna move forward. Um, here's some other ideas for how to get more done in less time, setting those top three goals for the day, really setting up your environment for work um, to be able to, um, you know, to be able to get things done, scheduling breaks, right? That's gonna get into this self-care idea, right? Give yourself a break. Um, have space to write down the distracting thoughts, right? My dry erase on the on the mirror and it wipes right off just so you know, like it's super easy. You could also do it on the glass in the shower. I did that when I was working on my dissertation because um, I would always think of things in the shower so I could write really quickly on the glass. Um, block those distracting apps or websites uh, and avoid multitasking, right? We think multitasking really has been shown as it is not really a thing. Our brain task switches and we can switch back and forth, but it, the time it takes our brain to get back into the other thing, I have found when I can actually focus and I'm like, I am just doing this thing right now. It's so much better. The quality is better. My mind is better. It's just, it's just better for our brains, right? So now we're going to take care of ourselves, right? We're going to think about, we can't pour from the empty cup. You've heard us say that a million times, right? You cannot pour from an empty cup. So how are we going to fill our cups? And I like this little visual too about um, stress and versus strong, right? It's only just a difference of kind of flipping those three letters there at the end. But stress is not what happens to us. It's our response to what happens. And response is something we can choose. So we always have that idea of the, here's the things within my control, right? And here's the things out of my control. And yeah, like Bailey saying, it's so important to make time for your Sondra fam, being able to come to these socials, being able to spend a few minutes with the daily ritual or writing um, one of the journal prompts. Um, and I also, I cannot uh, overemphasize the need for a hug right? Because my husband, I'm also, a lot of times I'm walking around, I'm really stressed. I've got to do this. I've got to do this. And he's like, does someone need a hug? I'm like, yes, yes, I do. And I do the same for him, right? So never underestimate the importance of just asking someone, your kids, your significant other friends, like, does somebody need a hug? That's assuming you're a hugger. And, um, but sometimes even people who aren't huggers need a hug, right? So you can always kind of ask them, um, always ask, but hugs can be quite welcome, especially this time of year. So here's some other tips and things for you to kind of think about. We're going to start filling our cup here in a second. So I'm going to kind of give you lots of stuff. I'm going to fill up your jug first so that you can put some of these things, decide what you want in your cup. Um, stick to those normal routines as much as possible. I know sometimes during this um, time of the year, things are just kind of out of whack. Getting enough sleep taking time for yourself by doing the activities you enjoy. So hopefully you kind of have that idea with the needs and the wants activities, being mindful of what you eat and drink. Where's your water, right? 
Um, move your body, even if it's only a short walk or dancing around the house to holiday music or just walking up and down the stairs a couple times. Move, don't just sit. And ask for help. This is so important around this time of year. Uh, most employers have an employee assistance program that you can check in with for free. Um, you can schedule some time to meet with them. If you're already seeing a therapist, might be a good time to think about maybe booking something extra um, for this month if you're feeling a little struggle so that you have a chance to kind of work with them. And these are some simple ways to feel better in 60 seconds. Um, coloring. It says cold shower. I'm going to argue with that one. I feel like a warm shower would make me feel better. A cold shower would not make me happy. Um, but I could be totally wrong. <laughs> I hear all these benefits of doing the, the cold stuff. Um, maybe savoring a treat, stretching, getting some fresh air, <clears throat> cuddling with, with a, a person or a kitty or a doggy, right? Bailey is pointing out, remember kitty and doggy hugs count too. Doing some journaling, listening to some nature sounds. There's tons of videos and songs and those kinds of things in um, Spotify and on YouTube that you can find. Um, and just kind of thinking about those different things. There's also this HALT method um, that Jennifer O oh shared with us, this idea of um, thinking about things, maybe you're hungry, um, maybe you're angry, can lead to those irrational thinking, maybe you're lonely, um, or maybe you're tired, right? And those signs that you need to take a break. Maybe you don't have any energy or motivation, it's harder to stay positive, finding yourself beginning to withdraw from the support system, favorite things don't feel as fun anymore, smallest inconveniences make you very upset. Sometimes again, just identifying like, what am I feeling? So like every morning um, when I'm journaling, the first thing that I write down is how am I feeling, right? Like, am I feeling tired? Am I feeling grumpy? Am I feeling overwhelmed? Am I feeling stressed? Am I feeling uncomfortable in my clothes, right? And then it's like, why do I feel like this? And a lot of times, even just thinking that and then writing those things down help me figure out a way to get out of that, right? There's also these sections in our journal. We have the self-care bingo. We've got the mind-body health plan. We've got the this week I want to feel. Um, we've got, and I'm going to cycle through these as you're kind of thinking of, of filling up your cup here. These five, five quick mindfulness practices about with a grounding, what's one thing you see, hear, smell, feel, and taste, something you're gra grateful for, taking five deep breaths, writing down three positive affirmations, um, stretching or moving for five minutes, um, squeezing, um, squeeze in a little hand massage to reduce stress, practice four, seven, eight breathing, in for four seconds, hold for seven, exhale for eight. Um, three minutes to savor a delicious treat, five minute brain dump, any worries on a piece of paper, 10 minutes going outside for a nature walk. Um, I have lots of ideas for you here. Sometimes I feel like all the ideas get a little overwhelming too, right? But hydrating, brain dumping, moisturizing, checking in with a loved one, tidying up your space, reading a book, unplugging, stretching, spending time on your hobbies, um, listening to those daily rituals, putting that sheet face mask on, tidying up, moving your body, um, reading, listening to those rituals, connecting with a loved one, trying out a new hobby. Um, and then I saw Brenda was saying, um, she read one time, if you look at a loved one's picture for 15 seconds, three times a day while at work, your stress level goes way down and you have overall um, more satisfaction. So that's a great idea. Um, yeah, so this is definitely, Kathleen, this is your self-care bank, <laughs> giving you all these different ideas. So what you're going to do is you can draw a cup or you can just write things down in a bulleted list. You can kind of, um, again, put things in a sticky note. Um, and then you're going to fill it with things that you can do that prioritize your self-care. I was honestly thinking of just getting a, a cup or a mug or something and writing things down on some little scraps of paper and then folding them up and putting them in there. And then when I'm feeling stressed or whatever, just kind of pull one out. Um, you can also use action statements like saying things like, I will do this or, you know, I will um, look at the picture of my loved one for, you know, three times a day. I can, I commit, I choose. We've got that self-care bingo habits and um, activities, mind, body, health, that halt idea, um, journaling, taking a walk, breathing, taking regular breaks, daily affirmations. I, I remember somebody put when they were doing the to-do list was like, don't forget to put to breathe, right? We do need to Remember to breathe, um, drinking our water, taking a break from your phone, listening to a motivating podcast, doing a brain dump, and committing to doing a daily cup check. 
Um, don't wait until your cup is empty, right? Yeah, um, remembering to take your daily meds, taking your supplements, taking your vitamins. Here's some other fun little ways. I thought these were kind of pretty little um, cup pictures of different kinds of things you can put in if you like to do um, kind of the cut and paste from magazines. You could make a, a fun little picture there. Right. So all these different things. So I'm going to just kind of flip back and forth through these, give you some time um, to kind of think about all the things that you might want to write down that you can use to fill your cup. All right. And share with us if you have some other ideas as well. Um, so we can kind of kind of check in with each other. Oops. All right, so how are we doing? Hopefully we have some ideas, some different things. Like I said, there's kind of this, I feel like this was kind of your self-care bank um, that we're um, uh, giving you here. So hopefully you're taking some screenshots. I did find out, and I'm not sure exactly how this is gonna happen, but they we did, um, we are recording and only the folks who um, signed up for the exclusive event will get the recordings. I'm not 100% sure how that's gonna work, um, but hopefully you'll probably get an email or something to let you know so that you can always kind of review this as well. So yeah, Donna's saying so many screenshots and ideas. Yes, I love it. And again, I love the idea of just um, kind of making that cup with different things that I can kind of pull out of it. So hopefully you have a nice little um, idea list of things that you can kind of pop in there. Um, and then there were some of those little ideas there. So what we're going to do here really quick is just we're going to um, think about one thing that you can do that makes everything else easier or maybe unnecessary to get um, some clear direction on how to make the best use of your time. And maybe your one thing is to create a fill your cup right? Create that list of things to fill your cup. And remember, the important thing is in the years to come, you want your friends and family to remember all the love you gave and the time that you spent together, right? And I think that's kind of my favorite thing about the, the Christmas vacation movie is that Clark finally does realize like it wasn't about all these like get a giant tree and 
have this big dinner and, you know, do all these things. It was, it was being with family. It was showing them that you love them. It was showing them that you wanted to be with them um, and kind of being together. So hopefully you've got an idea for what that one thing is um, that you want to do, right? Oh, um, self-compliment um, for the habit tracker. Yes. Love that. So hopefully you've kind of got an idea there. Hopefully your cats and dogs are not tangled up in your lights like these little guys are. Um, and so here is the link and Bailey's going to pop that. I don't have an actual QR code on here, but Bailey's going to pop the link in here. Um, and this, you can get an early sign up for a new 14 day email series, 14 days to believe. If you're looking for a sign to start manifesting your dream life, this is it for 14 days. You're going to get self-care activity, think journaling prompts, exclusive printables, curated affirmations to help you make your dream life become a reality. So you will be the first folks who get to sign up for this. I don't think, I think it comes out on an email, maybe on Monday. Um, and I'm, I, not 100% sure when it starts. I think it might be starting the following Monday. Um, but these are always super fun um, ideas and things that we get. Um, so hopefully you'll sign up for that. No cost. Um, just will be there for you. 14 days to believe. And then um, please, please, can you believe it's been an hour already? But we would love for you to take the survey. Let us know what you're thinking. More things that you want to see. Um, there's the referral QR code. If you want to refer a friend, hopefully everyone is in Sonder Club so that we can see you in there. Feel free to share any of these, um, um, any of these different things that you've written down. Feel free to share those um, in Sonder Club. Yeah. And like Bailey's saying, especially with this event being this um, new idea of the exclusive events, let them know kind of what you liked. I think they're going to things will morph a little bit, um, over the coming months. So just kind of keep an eye out for that, but let them know your thoughts. There's the YouTube link for all the other social recordings. Like I said, you will get, um, you will get a special link or you'll get a special something with, with this recording so that you'll be able to see it. And this is my playlist. Um, I think I got to all the songs except for the points that I read, um, and the marshmallow world, which is one of my favorite ones, but, um, hopefully, You've got some great ideas, um, ways to tackle that to-do list, ways to kind of move forward, ways to really make this the most wonderful time of the year, right? To make this um, feel really good because that's what we really want. So thank you so much for spending some time with us today. I hope to see you. Of course, we have the weekly setup um, tomorrow. I'll be doing the weekly setup tomorrow night. We have weekly setup on Monday morning, lots more other socials to sign up for. Um, thank you all so much for your great ideas, all the fun. I love being here with you. Take care. Um, and we will see you soon. May your holidays be jolly. Your hallways filled with holly. Your fireside stays burning brighter than it did before. May your string lights keep that twinkle. May your silver bells all jingle. And carolers sing carols at your door. And may your heart.